Yo, Rick, can I get a little more bass, please? Yeah, sure, man. Uh, you said bass, eh? Just want a bit more bass in my ears, please. I'm just looking What's for the channel. Can't you just put the bass up? I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. Can... Just put the bass up, please. More bass. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ricky. Welcome to the HitLab Academy. Today we are looking at why and how you should be organizing your sessions in Logic Pro X. There's a couple of reasons why this is very important. First one is it allows the client to have a much better experience because you are able to navigate the session a lot quicker. Second one is when you're mixing. When you get to the mixing phase, the last thing that you want to do is be looking for files. When I'm mixing, I want to be listening and reacting in real time. If I go the bass is a little bit too loud, I want to be able to pull it down as quick as I can and hear the result of that. I don't want to be distracted by going where is the bass and by the time I get to it, um, I've already sort of lost the feeling I was after. If I want to EQ, change something on the EQ on the vocal or on the acoustic guitar, again, I want to be able to have the EQ open in eight seconds flat or whatever it is, as quick as I can, so that I can just start working and implement the creative ideas rather than having to be slowed down by looking for things. The third reason why all of this is very important is that it allows me to, when I share files with other engineers, so let's say I'm engineering a project and it's gonna go off to be mixed by someone else, they're gonna get a very organized session. They're gonna open it up, everything's labeled, there's markers, um, there looks like there's a system, and even though they might not know my system, there's not drums all over the place, and there's not, you know, it's gonna be laid out in a way that's intuitively gonna make sense to someone else as well, which is gonna make their life a lot easier, and as we all know in this industry, if you can make other people's lives easier, they're more inclined to hire you in the future, which is a win. First up, I wanna to chat to you about markers. Markers is incredibly important. Basically, if you look at this session here, when I'm at this particular view of the song, there's no indication as to where I actually am. If I wanna know, these are probably choruses, these groups of files here, but if someone says, can I go from the verse, I have to scroll up and try and figure out where that is in the mess that is this project at the moment. So having clear markers and uh, uh, sections in, in Logic would definitely help to organize this a lot better. The way that we add markers is basically, there is a drop down menu at the top here, which you can click, which will reveal your marker lane and you can add with a plus, it'll add a marker in there. If you double click on it, you can relabel that as verse, for example. There are shortcuts for these as well. So if I continue, um, the shortcut for a marker is Alt and the apostrophe key, it'll create a marker for you. If you create it in the wrong, I've created this one uh, a bar too early, you could just drag it one bar on. If your cursor's over a, a marker that you've created, you can hit the Shift apostrophe and it'll rename it. So I can go verse, I can go further here and say this was the bridge, so Alt apostrophe, shift apostrophe allows me to do these really quick on the fly. Next up is labeling. So if you go look at this session here, you'll notice that the labeling is a little bit off at this point in time. Here's a bunch of files that just says audio 13, audio 16, there's a bass. If you were trying to look for a specific sound, a synth or whatever, and the track name happens to be audio 13, that's not gonna help at all to find it very easily. Now you're soloing things, trying to figure out what's going on. So clear labeling is crucial for getting around your session and knowing exactly where what is. And finally, I wanna to chat to you about having a system with your channel order, the way that you're structuring your session that makes sense to you. So before we look at the specifics of my system, I wanna just show you how I basically do this. So if I happen to have a bunch of empty channels here, let's say these were three vocal channels, the first thing I would do is I would label them as the verse, the chorus, and the bridge. If you click on one of them and you hold the shift key and click at the bottom, it'll select all three of them. Then you can right click on it, go down to create track stack or the shortcut is shift command D and then you can create a summing stack or a folder stack. Now a folder stack basically just puts these into a folder. I will show you what that looks like. Um, it creates this folder here called sub. So if I open it up, you'll see there and I can then relabel that as vocals. Now what this is, this is basically just a folder that houses those tracks and there is a volume uh, slider that would affect the volume, but that's sort of all the functionality you have there. If we go back and instead of creating a regular folder track, we create 
uh, I'm going to use Shift Command D for the shortcut. Uh, we create a summing stack. What that does, you'll see, it's going to again group them together. So I've got them inside of a folder. And this time I'm going to relabel that as my vocal. But this time you'll see that the summing stack is now both a folder, but it also works as a group bus. So what it's done is it's rooted these three individual channels into that channel as an actual AUK bus. So if I click on the verse, you'll see that this is sending to bus 34, and you'll see that the input on the folder it created is bus 34. So the beauty of having these, this folder system in Logic Pro X is that if I've got a project that is 240 channels odd as this one is, it allows me to put things into groups of folders. As you can see in this session here, it gives me a much easier overview of what's going on. So for example, I can open up my drums, I can open up the ensemble for the blinds here, and you can see that there's a ton of channels inside of that folder and they collapse nicely down to one individual folder. The benefit of using the summing stack instead of just the regular folder is that it also allows me to treat all of those things essentially as a group fader um, would be on an analog console. So I can do EQs and, and automation rides and compression and any effect I really want to on that and affect all the files that's in it. I can also go into the folder and treat the tracks individually because each channel still has its individual uh, channel strip as well. So let's chat a little bit about the system I use to organize these folders. So basically what I do is I take all the individual channels and I group them together into summing stacks that make sense. So for example, I've got a lead vocal, I've got verse harmonies there, I've got chorus harmonies. So the idea here is that I group things into these st summing stacks, as you can see. Then what I have is I have a very specific order that these things go in. At the top is always my vocal, with my lead vocal being right at the top. The reason I put the vocal right at the top is because for me, the vocal is always the most important thing. So my sessions generally looks like vocals at the top, then piano, keys, synths, organs, uh, electric pianos, all those sort of things. Underneath that would be all the orchestral stuff like strings and horns. Underneath that would then be guitars, electric guitars, acoustic guitars, underneath that bass, underneath that drums, underneath that percussion, underneath that my sound effects, rises, all those sort of things. As I mentioned before, it allows me to be able to go into any session and know exactly what I want. If, I, if you ask me, hey, can we put up the bass guitar? I know exactly where that's gonna be. I know I'm gonna scroll to the bottom and if I see drums, I know I need to go a little bit up. If I see guitars, I know I need to go a little bit down. So by organizing and having my own system, it allows me to be able to navigate these sessions so, so, so quickly. So just a quick recap, so markers, very important for being able to navigate through a song. Labeling, very important to be able to find specific sounds, that specific synth sound you recorded or the B3 organ or whatever it is. And lastly, having a, a, a system in place for how you organize your channels uh, top to bottom. And again, this can be anything that you are comfortable with that makes sense in your head. I hope you guys find today valuable and I hope that by implementing these things, it would make your lives a lot easier in the future. Please like and subscribe the YouTube channel, hit the notifications bell to be notified of future videos. And you can also head over to thehitlab.co.za to check out how you can work with us if you want us to do mixes or remote recording. We are available on there. Until next time, later.